Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, as a Patreon request from Amy Gibbon, aka Punch Cards, I'm going to be talking about the new album from Polybond, Washamist. I know we changed the album cover to this, but uh, I like the original version better, so I'm keeping it like that. Yes, I have been sitting on this for a while. So I'll say this was an interesting outcome for a Patreon request. An obscure Bandcamp artist paying for a video on a completely different obscure Bandcamp artist. Don't know if this is the kind of thing I'd end up covering if the guy himself had hit me up and thrown this at me, but eh, I don't know, never mind that. So yeah, Polly Bond is an experimental ambient artist from Iowa. This isn't his first release or his most recent release. Uh, but it's the only one I've actually heard, so... <laughs> this is a pretty weighty release. 16 tracks, 53 minutes. I, I mean, it's not exactly weighty in terms of actual length, but there is a lot of stuff to cover in this thing. This is not gonna be like that last Paul Van Dyke release, which was almost twice as long as this, but had, like, nothing of substance for me to really talk about. There does appear to be a pretty wide variety of ideas that went into this thing, and it's doing its best to keep you interested from front to back. Certainly a very unique release that isn't quite like any other album I've covered here. It's not like other Bandcamp artists I've heard where their style is really derivative of someone else and less professional sounding. While I can definitely see some resemblance to other artists, uh, the one he reminds me the most of is probably Knocked Plank. That guy's earlier stuff like Sex Fence and Broad Tape Band has a similarly lo-fi, abstract, and formless presentation. Maybe there's a bit of Boards of Canada or Wonder Tricks Point Never in there too, but he's far from a ripoff of those artists. Seems to be primarily just kind of doing his own thing. And I certainly have to give my thumbs up to that. But here's the thing, I've been sitting with this request for quite a while now, mulling it over, trying to parse my thoughts on it. I think at the end of the day my thoughts are that this is a good album, this is a very good album, but it's not quite a great one. Problem is, it didn't really evoke much of any emotional reaction out of me. I can't think of much I outright object to in terms of the ideas on display here, or the presentation. It really feels like the kind of thing I should love more, but I think it's one that I respect more than I get uh, more of a visceral reaction out of. Well, I do have some more concrete criticisms of the album. Like, on a technical level, I will say I do have one major criticism of this thing, in that the volume levels are really inconsistent. Some tracks were really quiet, made me want to turn it up to hear it, like, uh, the, uh, It Glistens Within a Brown and Silver Snow Lab, which was weirdly lower in the mix than the straight ambient piece that came right before it, or Calculator, which starts out almost completely silent, and others were really loud and made me want to turn it down, especially near the end with tracks like Down and Brenda. I was reaching for the volume control on my headphones pretty frequently while listening to this thing. In general, the mixing and mastering could definitely stand some improvement. I heard some clipping audio in some parts too that I didn't really like. I mean, some of my own albums have had this problem before, and at least unlike when I did that, the below average audio quality here does actually kind of sort of fit with the lo-fi aesthetic that sounds sometimes like you've just found a bunch of crappy cassette tapes in your grandfather's attic or something like that. It does kind of service that feel it's going for. I just kind of wish I didn't feel the urge to adjust the volume so often. It's best to have everything st stay around the same level across the board, this didn't really do that. Also, I feel like there were some flubbed transitions between tracks. There are moments where it feels like some tracks were directly segueing into each other, but did not. Like, I have no idea why Zone of Brown starts with a fade-in when the previous track was pretty clearly leading directly into it. It's kind of like what Jean-Michel Jarre did with Equinox Infinity, and, like, he faded out the tracks on streaming services, but there's no fade-out on the previous track, so it wasn't trying to serve that same purpose. You get the pop at the end that Jarre was trying to avoid, and the annoying fade that I didn't like. It just kind of sounds awkward and bad. Similarly, Brenda sounds like it was trying to segue into Love Truly Nobody Knows, but just doesn't for whatever reason. It has a pause there instead. Weird moments like that kind of get on my nerves a bit too. But yeah, all that aside, I do think there were a lot of intriguing and interesting ideas on display on this album. The opener world is a pretty strong start to this thing, with its artificial intelligency synth pads, low quality hi-hat samples and little pianos for texture, Penn has some cool Thomas Fellman-ish ambient pad accompanied by side chaining and a barely present kick. 
Organic Cup has lots of strange textures that are more mechanical, but add up to a formless and more organic sound. The latter is short, but it at least leaves an impression. And there are other similar tracks like that, that may not last long, but at least have standout textures. Like the glicky watches of Spurgeon and Wet grass, and the mysterious ceremonial horns of a lonely drummer playing surrounded by his cubist-forming ancestors. Yeah, these are song titles, alright. And that particularly ridiculous title is attached to one of the most unique-sounding tracks on this entire thing. But there are also tracks that just don't really add anything. Halo 3 Will Never Exist Again is a largely forgettable ambient interlude, as is Calculator and Basement. I do remember Calculator a bit more for its above-mentioned volume fuckery. And probably also the closer Garden as well, though, uh, despite being the shortest track here, it at least still kind of made me feel something, so I can give that a pass. But whatever, none of these take away from the experience. As for longer tracks, there are some that hit and others that don't as much. I think the ambient grooves of Kleinness were pretty fun and unique. The percussion tracks sound like banging on fire buckets or something sometimes and Zone of Brown, in spite of the really frustrating transition that opens it, as I mentioned before, is actually probably my favorite track on the album. It's a nine minute, mostly straight ambient piece that evolves a fair bit as it goes on, stays very subtle and isolated, and probably stands out as the most emotionally resonant track on this entire thing. On the other hand, you get tracks like Catalyst in the Cold Mind, which is parts I really like. Starts out with the sounds of this guy making shivering noises. Kind of reminding me of the intro to Metamatics My Mushin Get. Adds a lot of icy synth pads, which sound kind of cool, and some other neat acidish synth arpeggios. But, I don't know. This track just seemed to have a lot of spaces that didn't go anywhere or really engage me. I think Zona Brown made use of its subtlety better than this one did. As for the stuff near the end, there's still a fair bit of good stuff here, too. Uh, I mentioned how Down and Brenda were mixed maybe a bit too high for their own good, but I do really like the raw edge they provide. Being more hard-hitting, adding variety, they are among the most memorable moments on here. Especially the latter's repetitive samples, which seem to say the title forward and reverse every few seconds. And Love, Truly Nobody Knows, had a lot of one o esque synth progressions that sounded like some kind of electronic harp playing. Sounded really cool on top of all the other ambience. There's a lot of cool stuff to be found, and it's the kind of album that I can keep listening to repeatedly and discover new things that I didn't notice before. Like I said, this is a very creative and unique album that brings a lot of cool ideas to the table, but I still feel like it had the potential to be even better than it turned out being. I will say as an album experience, it feels like a bit of an incohesive mess, just like a random collection of tracks that don't really service each other as much as they could. I almost get the feeling sometimes like it could work in the same way as something like GeoGaddy does, just a random selection of ideas that set up a certain creepy mood, but the individual tracks here are not as well defined, and the mood that it all creates is not as consistently well executed. It feels like a bit of a mixed bag, and one that had some occasional kinda annoying technical difficulties, it just never really resonated with me on a deeper level. But you know, I'm always willing to recommend something more out of the box. And this definitely qualifies as such. At the end of the day, I do think there's enough cool ideas and concepts here for this album to be worth people's time. It doesn't overstay its welcome or even have re any real dud tracks. It just feels a bit unrefined and just didn't really resonate with me emotionally. So yeah, I think Watch the Mist is a good album. It's worth a shot. This guy's got some potential for sure. And I'm overall feeling a 7.5 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. There are some people you want to add yourself to that list or make me review something linked to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.